So this video is going to show you me emptying the box that the Manta came in onto my kitchen table, piece by piece. I'm not unbagging the bags just because there's so many of them. That's the box that came in. The problem with the microphone I have is unidirectional. So what that means is that it didn't really pick me up walking around the table too much. So I'm going to apologise in advance for the audio. You can still hear it, but yeah. Anyway. Let's get on with it and you should be able to hopefully see and hear everything, but if not, oh well. Alright, I'm filming this in my kitchen because it's the only room big enough with a table that I can use to actually show you the Tau Manta as it's unboxed, everything you get. For reference, the Tau Manta came in the brown box. The white box is on top, of which there are four. So as you can see, four boxes are a Tynar Supremacy Armour. A complete Tynar Supremacy Armour. As in, it has the main body and torso, it has the two arm weapons, and it has the, which one? The Supremacy Multi Driver. So it's got the top weapon as well. It has everything. That is a Tynar Supremacy Armour. That is a Manta. It's insanely big. It's insanely heavy. The box weighs a ton, but it is awesome. Awesome. So buried deep away inside the big box with a inside one of the big plastic baggies of parts, you get this envelope. Please do not bend. And the reason why you don't want to bend it is because it is your certificate of Manta ownership, which is lovely. Mine. As you can see, is number 158, which is just lovely. I'm not going to read it out loud because I feel terribly self conscious, but you can read it if you want to. So, there's the certificate. It looks a bit blurry, but yeah, who cares? It's fine. It's a manta. It's mine. So, it gives you some very uh, <clears throat> brief build instructions for the devilfish and the hammerhead, which we'll get to momentarily. Then each page is two-sided, so you've got the main parts of the fuselage. I'll be comparing the list as we lift the bits out of the box, so you can see what's what. So there's that one. And then you get the wings and engines. And the nose and upper transport section. Then you get the tank bay. And inside that you also get the tank bay interior. Then we've got the cockpit exterior details. I don't know why I'm reading aloud. You see these people doing some PowerPoint presentation, it's really bloody annoying. So I'm not gonna read it. You can read it yourself, but basically this is the complete list of everything that's inside it. So a load of burst cans, awesome stuff. Wings and engines and all sorts of things. I read it again. God damn it. So Yep, these are all the people. Look at the, you'll notice the air cast guys are very thin. The ethereal, yeah. And then the, uh, so this is where we start the actual building. So there are one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen pages of assembly. Not the nice, lovely CAD stuff they have now, but yeah. So I'm going to pop this back in its envelope because, as you can see, I've already bent the corner of one of the pages, or a couple of pages. So, while I do that, we'll get ready for the next bit. And for those interested, this was checked by VIR, the Video Assist Referee. Possibly LAR, but VIR sounds funnier. On the 7, 7 2018, so that's a year. This has been sitting in their warehouse for a year. Which is pretty cool. You know, because they do say they have a couple in stock at all times. I suppose it's such a big thing, they want to keep it. So, I'm going to leave these sitting out so I can compare the bits as I lift them out and I'm going to reposition the camera and then we'll get cracking. 
So just in case you thought the box was empty, you know, nope, it is pretty much packed the whole way to the top. Now, obviously I've had this in and out once or twice just to look at it before I filmed the video. I just couldn't really restrain myself, but I'm going to lift each bit out and put it on the table in a sort of semblance of order so you can get a rough idea of how it's going to look when it's built. So setting the camera up now. Okay. So. First piece is I think it's just a bit of flashing. I'm not going to throw it out in case I've missed it, but I don't think it's necessary. So the first thing we've got is one of the wings. And that is a big piece of resin by itself. I mean, you can see the size of my hand. I do have small hands, but that is a big piece of resin. You probably can't hear this as well, because obviously the microphone's in one place and I keep moving around. So, yeah, and it's a microphone that's really good for picking up direct voice, but... And there's the other wing. And then this lovely piece is the... Well, let's just have a look. Where's my bits list? So there you go. Those are those three. The top... Left top fuselage, centre top fuselage, and right top fuselage. So those are the top fuselages. So I can put that piece down there. Anything else on that side? No. So. Actually, no. Those are not the top fuselages. That's the wing in the top fuselages. What am I talking about? So let's do that again. So that... We've got there is the center top fuselage and the left and right wing. Uh, this piece is the tank bay. So we'll just pop that down there, spread those out a little bit more. I mean, there are, there are some really heavy chunks of resin. Yeah. And then we've got this piece, which is lovely and big, and actually probably the chunkiest bit of resin. You might find me hearing, hearing me say chunky a lot. Uh, I'm not sure what piece this is. Uh, nah. Piece 17. This is piece 17 and it is the lower front fuselage. So that is obviously going to sit here. And the keys on that are huge. I don't know if you can see them there, but they're, they're absolutely huge. Next we've got the nose which I think is just going to slot in there at some point. So now, now we've finally got to the uh, left and right top fuselage. So these go I'll just shift that out of the way here and you can sort of see where that's going to join. There's a bit of flashing and things that need moving and that is obviously going to sit here except there's a big piece there but I shall try to roughly size this up so those two are going to sit yeah there's a load of flashing that needs cleaned up in these already well obviously it's just, I haven't done anything to them and there's the other wing so you can there immediately you can see the width I'm just going to spin this microphone around because you probably couldn't hear a word of that but yeah immediately you can see the width of this I mean that is the width of my kitchen table which I think if I measure last time is two and a half feet. 
So it's absolutely huge, this thing. Might even be three feet, this table. But it's insanely big. It's such a big bit of kit. So let's keep going. So, sorry, the kitchen floor is squeaky. Actually, let's bring the camera to the front. Move the light out of the way. So you can get a rough idea of what's going on here. I mean, this is the width. The width's about the only thing here that's going to be realistic. If I lift the camera up a little bit. I mean, it is the width of a kitchen table. And it's not a small kitchen table. It's not a big kitchen table, but it's not a small kitchen table by any means. So, absolutely crazy. There is a load of flash on stuff. Hang on. I'm just going to move my chair, which has my plugs and things on it. I didn't really think this through. I knew it was always going to be bad, so. So yeah, I mean, you can get a rough idea of the size of this thing, just the size of the wings, the centerpiece of the bottom. I'm hoping I can get this bit built up fairly easily. The wings, the center body, the nose base, and the fuselage, the front fuselage. Now I'm going to lift, Maxi, I'm going to push all this to the back and start doing the bags and show you the bags. I've lifted one out, but you know, there's still, you can't really see that actually, it's a black hole, but there are still several bags left to do, but I'll do them where I have light. So I'm gonna move everything back on the table and then stand up here. So there's the bulk of the chassis. Hang on, let me just move the mic a little. There's the bulk of the chassis at the back, the big bits, I mean, it's insane but that's the big bits plus some children's art and some booze which I'll probably need after this here's one of the big bags I am debating whether to start taking this out of the bags just because there is so much I mean literally there are tons just turn the mic around tons of bags so one big bag yeah, try not to destroy it, it cost a bloody fortune. And there's the bag with some fire warriors. And massive big hunks of resin in there as well. Well, at least you think they're big and then you look at the rest of the model. Some very, very warped burst cannons in there. I mean, they're practically bent in two. I'm going to try straighten those out, but I might need to get on to the forge world and complain. Yeah. I will, obviously, when I, when I go to build this, I will be going through all the bits individually in far more detail, but the time it would take, the time to do it for a video is just insane. Another bag of large resin bits. I could probably look them and tell you what's in them, but I don't think it really matters. They're just large, chunky bits of resin. And another bag of large, chunky bits of resin. Obviously, weapons, uh, landing gear, various other doodads. There's the cockpit, I think. So, I mean, the chassis was big. You can practically bury it under the other bags. It's, you really can bury the main chassis under the other bags. It is insane. I'm so chuffed. Then last, but very much not least, we have plastic sprues. So we've got uh, four Devilfish kits, a load of drones, some old style XV8 
battle suits. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I might, I might build them up. I've got enough XV8s kicking around anyway, but I suppose I could convert them into something else. Meh. Then we've got more plastic sprues, which is the rest of the Devilfish kits. And I think... Yeah. I'm going to assume then that the hammerhead kits... Yeah, there's the hammerhead kits on the other side of that box, so... I mean... And that is a kitchen table full of manta. It's absolutely crazy. And I don't know how long it's going to take me to build it. So, that is everything you get in the Manta box. As you can see, I'll just tilt the box up. Completely empty. Well, a few rally bits in there, I don't know what that is, rubbish probably. So yeah, empty box. Absolutely jam-packed table. Insane. Awesome. Awesome, but insane. If you've made it this far, thanks very much for watching. There's another couple of videos there you can click on. You can click on the subscribe button if you want to. Uh, like the video if you want to. Stick a comment down if you've anything to say. And in the meantime, happy wargaming. And I'll see you next time.